have been talking about the persecution of Pakistani minorities, be it Hindus, Christians, atheists, uh, Ahmadi Muslims themselves, Shia Muslims, and now other sects of Sunni Muslims as well. Um, as I always say, everyone is going to burn in this fire that they have lit, this fire of blasphemy. Here's a cool fact. Um, blasphemy law was invented by, well, was um, was legislated by British back in the tw early 30s after one Muslim was offended and he killed a Hindu guy for, for writing a book called Rangila Rasul. So, anyway, so British said, okay, well, that's it. Nobody talks, nobody says anything about it, um, any, any, anyone's religion. So it was a pretty mild one. And that's in 1930s. Uh, 1947, Pakistan and India came into existence. And uh, those laws, most of the penal code remained the same. But in 1986, a military dictator, General Ziaul Haq, added another clause in the blasphemy law that if you insult Muhammad, just Muhammad, no other religious deity, you could be um, sentenced, uh, you, you, uh, maximum sentence is death. So... Um, so he added that. Obviously, this within itself is hypocrisy because why just Muhammad? Why not add Kalima and Lord Ganesh and uh, Ram and Krishna and all these and Jesus? Why not them? Anyway, it's a Muslim country. Therefore, we got to do it. Okay, sure. Um, but have a look at this. From 1930s till 1986, only... Um, I, forgot, very, I think it was 100 cases or something. Very, uh, anyway, very s small number of cases. In those 40 years but then from 1986 till 2019 1500 cases in, in the next 30 years that or 34 years that shows you so so what happened were people not blaspheming in the past i think as the book rungila rasul the guy who was killed in 1930s for writing the book that was uh, highly um, offensive to muslims very crudely written that was happening back then and that would have kept happening uh, after that as well so that shows that people were a lo lot more chilled back then so there were less than a hundred accusations of blasphemy in 40 years i think not even 100 i think it was just 50 or something but anyway whatever very low number so so they so obviously they were a lot more chilled they would not say oh this is blasphemy this is blasphemy but as soon as the state narrative came in oh no 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 nothing these blasphemy accus accusations skyrocketed. So what happened? All of a sudden, people were blaspheming more just after, just in spite of that law? No, what, it, what that tells you is that people's attitude towards blasphemy changed. And people thought, oh, okay, you didn't say Prophet Muhammad and gave him air kisses, then that's blasphemy. Um, if something written in Arabic that has Muhammad written on it and some illiterate person who cannot read or write, especially Arabic, because they're, uh, if they're Hindu or Christian, if it falls down and you don't pick it up, that's blasphemy. Um, so all these things, and obviously, and it, this genie is getting bigger and bigger and is devouring Pakistan from, um, from within itself. This has been picked up in European Union Parliament. So here's a video, check this out. Our re relics from a medieval past and have no place in our modern world. These laws are way too often misused to settle personal scores with devastating consequences for those who are accused. In Pakistan today, through its blasphemy laws and potential consequences of speaking out or just being misunderstood is leading to capital punishment. This is outrageous. This is almost too horrific to contemplate and goes against several of fundamental human rights. The case of Shagufta, Kausar, and Shafkat Emanuel are examples of the horrific consequences. So here she only spoke about one case, and that's a very atrocious case. Uh, Shagufta Kausar and her husband Shafkat Emanuel, um, illiterate laborers, Christian laborers, were accused of sending text messages to each other that was that were blasphemous text per, personal conversation you know if they find out what <laughs> how we communicate ourselves they will like, <laughs> the whole world will shake but anyway their mistake was they were underprivileged christians living in a islamic republic um so they exchanged some allegedly text messages that were blasphemous in nature and they were shown to um local court and then high court um 
and then they have uh, lodged an appeal in Supreme Court. But it's pending. But anyway, so they were sentenced to death back in 2014, been rotting away in prison in solitary confinement for the last seven years. That's just one case. And I'm actually, um, so all, uh, I'll show you the rest of them as well. So that was the case of Shigufta Takosa and Shafka that the lady was talking about. Ha have a look at the other two parliamentarians. And uh, Mr. President, um... I've asked you to take a good look at that picture because these are the human beings, real human beings in flesh and blood. They're in prison in Pakistan, these very people. And I showed you their picture. They were detained. And since 2013, sitting in prison in 2014, they received the death penalty. <laughs> a Christian couple. They were accused uh, of uh, having used a text in English uh, that they sent uh, through a phone to a number of people. Blasphemy message. Uh, uh, they didn't do it in their own language, or Urdu, but uh, condemned to death. We're all united in the one stance. So anyway, so they passed this resolution that um, Pakistan's WSPJ something uh, preferential treatment, I think it's called what it was called GSP. They said they have ado they have adopted a resolution calling for a review of the GSP, which which basically gives some benefits um, uh, as a trading partner to Pakistan to review that status. Um, in view of an alarming increase in the use of blasphemy accusation in the country as well as well as rising number of online and offline attacks on journalists and civil organizations in America. Unequivocally condemn. The resolution also calls on the government of Pakistan to unequivocally condemn incitement to violence, discrimination against religious minorities in the country and express expresses deep concern at the prevailing anti-French sentiment in Pakistan. Now, that part wasn't important. I mean, I think they should be allowed to... Um, to uh, to not like France, that's that that's not no one's business. Um, so anyway, so they're saying that um, they're going to review the Pakistan's eligibility for GSP. So they don't even have that status in the light of current events and whether there is sufficient reason to initiate a procedure for the temporary withdrawal of this status and the benefits from that come with it. And to report to the Euro European Parliament on this matter as soon as possible. So. Basically, and I think the resolution was like 140 people said, yes, review it, don't give them, meaning don't give them GSP status. Um, and I think only three or four people opposed. So that was a very clear sign, a message to the government of Pakistan that this has to stop. And as you guys, if you guys have been watching my videos, you would know how long I've been talking about it. This is just some, these girls on the right are Hindus and Christian girls. All abducted, forcefully converted, married, some killed off, some raped. Um, no, zero conviction yet. Zero conviction. And the one on the left was a Muslim girl, drew headlines. She was um, unfortunately raped on the motorway. Uh, and the perpetrators got death sentence within seven, eight months. Again, that's a good thing. We want that kind of justice for everyone. Maybe you, you might disagree on the death sentence part, but whatever. Uh, but at least there was some sort of justice. But zero convictions when it comes to minority girls. It's not just blasphemy. And I have three, four more stories to share with you about that. So, again, our human rights minister, Dr. Shuri Mazari, um, and our handsome prime minister, Mr. Imran Khan, he's handsome. Okay, you gotta, you know, d d don't be jealous, Indians. You got Modi. <laughs> we got Imran Khan. <laughs> I have to say it. Okay, sorry. Uh, Modi Bucks are not going to like it. <laughs> anyway, so um, our human rights minister, I've always said it's like one of the most useful uh, ministry in Pakistan. Again, she put out a tweet. And that's all she's there for, to put out these ridiculous tweets. Started crying Islamophobia. It is unfortunate that the co-sponsor of the EU's anti-Pakistan resolution was a member of a party that the Swed Swedish PM Stefan Lofven referred to as a neo-fascist single-issue party. And that's the sad part that in West, these kind of resolutions are being initiated by the far-right people. Uh, far right, but the overwhelming majority voted in his favor. They were not all fascists. So even if the person who initiated the resolution might belong to a right-wing party, that shows you that you are you are 
even liberals of the world are now waking up in this thing and that has always been our goal we want the liberals to see this bullshittery that goes on in muslim countries and in western countries as well they they will get up they it's a survival people will unfortunately get up and then as a re, and we worry about that we're seeing that in india that when liberals start abandoning them and they start going towards the right then uh, there's there's going to be uh, it's going to be bad news for unfortunately innocent muslims who are just bystanders but anyway so she pulled out um, a neo fascist single issue party with nazi and racist roots q now is where the gsp plus is getting muddied in islamophobia she pulled out the islamophobia card again oh right so we ask you don't hang people over frivolous accusations like blasphemy islamophobia they, they're telling us to have respect to human rights that is islamophobia that's correct islam is actually against human rights that's what we've always been saying islam is against human rights basic human rights basic human decency and if you tell people that respect human rights you are actually going against the teachings of islam so whenever you go against anything that's got to do with islam it's islamophobia for muslims it's very simple so that's what she cried she cried islamophobia but have a look at the next one she i mean is, is it as if the Western world would be interested in that. So she first said, oh, you know, this is far-right, neo-fascist, Islamophobia crap. Second tweet, we have issues to resolve. Oh, thank you very much for acknowledging that. I have sent numerous emails to uh, Minister Madam uh, Shirin Bazari. Numerous emails, links to these videos with authentic reports of how these girls are being kidnapped blasphemy hits at least it hits news um but no no response from them no response but you know if you're not going to talk rest of the world will talk anyway so she goes there uh, we have issues to resolve but there has been more movement now on our hr human rights international convention commitments than in previous governments the way forward is dialogue and negotiations yes we need to negotiate on these things should we give them basic human rights or not let me think about this let's sit down have a cup of coffee yeah look i mean are we allowed to hang people over blasphemy or not the other person from europe is saying no i think it's it's understood that your laws, blasphemy laws, killing people over blasphemy is a thought crime. And um, it's there's nothing to negotiate on that, Dr. Mazari. There's nothing to negotiate on that. Which we have been doing, not extreme public positioning, unfortunately. Okay, not extreme public positioning. That's your problem. Because we know that if the country that you guys have created, if you say that maybe we should revisit blasphemy laws, we know, whoa, hang on, let's think about it. Salman Tasir. Yes, he was killed by his own bodyguard for uttering the same words back in 2011 that we need to revisit these laws, blasphemy laws. So yes, we know that extreme public positioning, you mean that if you said something, being a human rights minister, you know this is a bullshit law. So stop making, tell your prime minister to stop making Islamist slogans like we're going to turn this into a Medina state, the state of Muhammad. That's exactly what happened in the state of Muhammad. And I'll tell you a couple of stories later on what Muhammad did. In the state of Medina, that's exactly what would happen. If you say anything against Prophet Muhammad, you will get assassinated. That's what Muhammad did. And I have a couple of stories from your own sources, by the way. So, so we have to. This is your problem. This is the monster that you've created. So unfortunately, you know, European Union has is now thinking about taking um, away wsp status the preferred trade uh, specialized program uh, whatever that is they've decided to take that away from you but furthermore it's now going to happen with america as well the entire western world needs to stand up but i i still see the western world is not fully committed to it they only twist the arm of uh, poorer countries which is i'll still take it don't get me wrong. I'm not going to say that, well, if you can't do that to Saudi Arabia, don't do that to Pakistan either. I wouldn't say that. No, no, do that to Pakistan. At least Pakistan will mend its ways. At least m the lives of minorities in Pakistan will improve. So I'll still do it. But my point is, do that with Saudi Arabia as well. They put Saudi Arabia in the UN's women's right chair. <laughs> human rights <laughs> so, the, the, i think a month or two months after after they they had uh, jamal khashoggi 
uh, chopped into a million pieces. Yeah, <laughs> they put Saudi Arabia the head of UN's human rights, and I think they just did someone. They just did something atrocious again. Some um, really terrible country. They, they 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 put in women's rights, head of women's rights or something. Yeah, that that's how bad UN can be. But I understand they want to take everyone with them, uh, and they want to you know go slowly. Okay, let's wait another hundred years. You guys will evolve. You guys might come into 21st century, but we would have moved on to the 22nd century. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's a good, that. I think that's good news. I think that's good news that it happened. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.